What's up you guys, it's Peter here and today I thought I'd cover my expenses living in Los Angeles, California and give you insight into what my expenses are on a monthly basis and on an annual basis. Now I've got some spreadsheets and how to track it manually and I can show you how you can do that for your own um, expenses as well so you can gain insight into your finances and then I'm going to show you how you can automate that using some software. So let's go and have a look. So here, um, this is Google Docs. So we're looking at a monthly budgeting spreadsheet. This is one of their templates. And if you wanted to um, you know, do that for yourself, we can show you in a moment how to do that. So the monthly budget that you want to track is basically here we've got food, gifts, uh, health, uh, home, transportation. We've got all of these different categories. And so the thinking is that um, you start by basically putting in your transactions, so both your expenses and your income. And once you've added all of these different categories and you've added, you know, what date it was at, the amount it was at, you know, a description perhaps of what it is, you're going to get a list of all of these expenses and or income as well. And then basically you're going to get a summary of how much uh, you know you've you've been able to save this month so that's one way to kind of start tracking this so how do you start doing this well if you start with a brand new spreadsheet let's do this first so here new a brand new spreadsheet we can oops uh, we can go new and then go to google sheets and then say instead of a blank one we can say from template so from template is going to allow us to to choose one. So here there's a couple, you know, to-do list, annual budget, monthly budget, a calendar, another calendar. And so here I've chosen this monthly budget one. And so that's what you saw earlier, where you see the setup, the summary here and the transactions. So this allows us to sort of, you know, add those expenses and all that. And they've already pre-configured this locked um, spreadsheet over here so that you will, after you've fed, fed it all the information, you will get um, an overview of this. So this is useful. So then the other one that I also wanted to show you is if you go to new, you can go to Google Sheets again from template and here we can do the annual one. So if we go to annual budget, right, or annual budget here, then it is going to pre-configure this as well. And we can see here at the bottom, uh, same kind of deal, right? So set up, start filling out all the expenses. Now, there are a lot of categories over here, right? So if you look at these, all these, you know, children and then activities, medical, clothing, whatever, debt, credit cards, student loans, taxes, this is quite accurate, you know, or rather there's a lot of categories in there. So you can get quite detailed with it. Education, tuition, books, all that kind of stuff. Entertainment, same thing, you know, everyday items, gifts, health and medical, um, home improvements, maybe some uh, insurances, all car insurance, health care, pets, food, you know, for pets, uh, technology, all hardware, software, transportation, a lot of car costs generally, travel, you know, all these different categories. Now, um, you can go as detailed as you want with this. I didn't particularly go this detailed. Um, that's, that's quite a lot. Um, I have software that automates this for me. So we're going to get into that in a moment. So next, under income, uh, wages, paychecks, or other, you know, freelance or, you know, maybe consulting, dividends, uh, capital gains of sorts, uh, this can all add up to income. And then at the end of it, you're going to get a summary, which gives you income and expenses and an ending balance. So this income and expenses is your cash flow. And cash flow and being aware of your cash flow is extremely important to be able to estimate and also project forward how much money you're going to be able to save. So here we can see, you know, for all the different months. Now, currently, none of this is filled out. You would have to fill this out with your own uh, data. So I would recommend start with doing a single month, right? And then once you've kind of filled this out, duplicate, you know, this spreadsheet. So, you know, for each month, you can start with this template and start filling it out. Now, oftentimes there will be recurring costs like electricity, utilities, whatever, you know, your rent probably. So, um, but still, it'll be good to sort of see where all of this is going, right? Where your money is going. So let's take a look at how I did it. So over here under one year expenses, I sort of thought like, well, I'm going to start out with all of these categories, but then I currently don't have any children. So, um, you know, we can skip out on some of these categories in, in its entirety. So next, let's have a look. I brought in here one year expenses and I'll call this one year expenses raw because I brought in all of these various categories from an automated tool. That tool is personal capital. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. Um, but so what that allows you to do is you can import what is called a CSV file, a comma separated values file. And so you can grab all of the subcategories as well as, you know, the amounts and all that. 
Now I've made a few modifications here. For instance, we can look at the rent and see the amount, right? So that's $24,000. Uh, that's for a two bedroom, two bathroom um, in West LA. Um, I share this cost with my girlfriend. I live together with her. And so really I've kind of, you know, taken off um, her portion of the rent. So basically my portion, oops, my portion of the rent is about $12,400. Now there's a bunch of other, you know, categories here and I've done big categories, sort of overview categories and subcategories. So let's have a look uh, how these work. So in the overview categories, uh, with the nice little uh, sum if expression, this is if you're into that, this is a, a really nice expression to basically only add everything together that is part of the home category or the health category, transportation and so on. Now I will share this spreadsheet with you. So if you wanted to use this as a starting point, you can do that as well. So let's get into the good stuff. So here, these are the graphs that I've put together for you. So it makes it a little bit easier to sort of look at what is actually going on. And so in total for my monthly expenses, I spent about 3,000, let's say $3,400. Now the biggest cost of that is definitely my rent, right? Living in Los Angeles is expensive. So here we see $1,047, that's just pure rent. Now, next category is health. So health, I started including things like um, healthcare, so basically insurance, right? The cost of insurance. And uh, we'll, we'll dig into that a little bit more in detail. Now this year, um, you know, I'm in my mid thirties now and I had some, um, some, uh, some costs, some uh, medical issues, some 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 back pain, and so I went to a chiropractor. I had to do an MRI. So these you know are, pri are pricey. So um, I added all of this up, and I annual uh, uh, so I averaged it out over the months so that we can have a picture of how much that costs. Next up, we have transportation. So that's everything to do with car. So I have a car, Los Angeles, a car city, you generally need a car. So here we'll, we'll see in a moment as we dig into the details, you know, it's your, it's um, car payments to a loan, it's uh, insurance costs, it's gasoline, it's DMV, you know, Department of Motor Vehicle registration costs. So everything related to car. Then food about $450 here. So transportation was $500-ish. Food was 460. So food, we're going to see, you know, there's a little bit of restaurants in there. There's also grocery costs in there. So that's about it for food. Then we have personal. So personal, what does that include? Well, that can be uh, savings for a variety of things. So savings for, uh, or, or personal items as well. Uh, things, for instance, like if I wanted to buy new items for a computer, uh, then over time, uh, I kind of, uh, you know, spread that cost out over time. I don't end up buying a new workstation for a computer every year. But, uh, you know, if we will see over a couple of years, this is going to add up. Travel. Uh, I am originally from Belgium. I'm not from the US. So occasionally I will travel home or maybe I will visit some, some friends in different uh, states or I will, uh, you know, travel to Mexico and go on vacation or uh, maybe somewhere else in the world, somewhere else in the US as well. So again, I will spread it out. So travel about $216 so that it's not like one huge cost, even though really some months will be, you know, a, f a plane ticket could easily cost 800 or more. Uh, $800 or more. So that can add up. Utilities, so that's generally electricity, gas, um, internet I count on, amongst that as well. Uh, and then we've got, you know, other things, uh, you know, small scale things like maybe uh, a gift, you know, could be a wedding gift or could be a birthday gift or and so on. But again, it's spread out, you know, averaged out over the months. So in total, we're looking at about $3,400. So my yearly total becomes about 40,000, you know, let's say 40 to 41,000, 40,800 ish. So average monthly is 3,400. And then here I've added in with the 4% rule, right? Remember the 4% rule. If you've seen the personal finance flowchart video, you're going to uh, get into that a little bit more too. And I have believe, I believe I, I linked down um, the, or I'll link in the 4% uh, video as well. But this really represents my annual cost, my $40,000 over here, multiplied by 25. And that gives me the value of a potential portfolio, an investment portfolio that I would need to cover these expenses. So if I have invested about a million dollars, a million and twenty thousand dollars, it would cover my current annual expenses. So let's go to the next one, which is basically the one year expenses. And now we can really dig into the more detailed, uh, you know, categories. So again, rent is the biggest one. Now we're looking at the yearly expenses now. So in, in one year, I spend about $40,000, $41,000. 
And so my rent is about 30% of that. That's $12,000 here. And then healthcare, a silver plan. This is a silver plan with uh, Kaiser Permanente. Now, currently, I do not have that plan in the sense that my healthcare is covered by my, uh, my employer. Uh, I have a, a main profession. Um, and so um, I don't have to currently pay as much, but I add that in there because I want to know what my expenses are. In essence, that healthcare plan that I get through my employer is a benefit. It's as if I get you know paid more money. We're talking currently about expenses and not about income. So that that coverage, I want to make sure that that is included because if say I wanted to you know become uh, retired and, and I'm financially independent and I become retired, I need to make sure that that healthcare plan is covered, right? Then loans and cars. So here, $3,600, that's a car loan. I see that as um, a car loan because I can finance my car, but it's also savings towards paying a car. So we'll, we'll get into that in a moment. Then we have the chiropractor that I had to pay. So that's basically somewhat part of my healthcare, right? So uh, that's, you know, three plus four is about $7,000, $7,300 or so um, for, you know, those backache problems that I had earlier this year. Um, then restaurant costs. So again, in, in a yearly basis, that's uh, you know three thousand dollars. So if I want to you know go to a restaurant, enjoy some nice food, um, that does add up as well. Uh, then we have travel. So this is as I was saying, travel plane, you know, go to go to um, Belgium or to go to Mexico somewhere else. Here we've got groceries. So the grocery store, I like to break that out as well. So it's separate from restaurants. So I know, okay, am I going to the restaurants a lot? The restaurants could be lunches at work as well. Groceries. Uh, you know, that's just go to supermarket, right? Uh, general merchandise. So this can be all kinds of small stuff around the uh, around the house. Could be even, you know, little bits of furniture that I might have bought. Uh, could be, um, yeah, maybe uh, something for my computer, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, automotive, so that's again, car as well. So we kind of have loans in car here and automotive again. So this means the insurance, the gasoline, um, the DMV registration, all of that kind of stuff. Then we have insurance. So insurance is car insurance. So again, that actually adds up to automotive as well. I don't really have any other insurances right now. I've got some insurances like life insurance that comes through work, but it's a benefit, which if I'm financially independent, um, I would self-insure. So my portfolio would basically help to self-insure me. Then we've got utilities, which basically is internet as well. Or actually, no, this is uh, electricity. Internet comes separate here. Uh, so that's gas uh, and electricity mostly. Then we've got computers, so 750, that's um, computer parts potentially, and then internet here is 650. And then we have a few other categories, smaller categories here at the top, uh, which didn't fit on the chart, so they're, they're smaller, we can get into that. So let's go over it over here, right? So here we can see rent $12,000 for one year, and that's my portion of a two bedroom, two bathroom, in West LA. Now, I've got a pretty good deal in the sense that this place is rent controlled and I've been here now for at least five to six years. So um, I'd say the, the rent around me and, and other apartments around me has definitely appreciated faster um, just because this place is rent controlled. So great. Um, healthcare, yeah, 4,200. That's that Kaiser Permanente plan. Uh, I could go with other plans too, but uh, yeah, 4,200. So about 350 a month. Then we've got here loans car. So this is what I was saying. My car loan was financed under 1%. So I'm going to do that. If it's under 1%, that's, you know, even if I have the money in cash, uh, because I can get, you know, a great interest rate doing that. But it also means that, you know, if, if, no, right now my car loan is actually paid off, right? So basically, you know, my car isn't really costing me anything anymore. But if I kind of save towards potentially a new car, then that comes down to about $18,000 every five years. Now, what kind of car can you buy for that? Well, it could be a Toyota, it could be a Honda, it could be a Mazda, it could be you know, a variety of cars, but I'm not going to buy a luxury car every five years because that is quite expensive. I mean, cars are already quite a big expense. Um, so I'm going to try to be reasonable with that. I mean, if I can get to drive that car for 10 years, well, great, right? But I also want to be, you know, reasonable with it in the sense that uh, there's going to be maintenance costs, there's going to be things that might need to be replaced at different at different mileages. So, okay, here the 18,000 will help cover towards that. And hopefully, you know, you should be able to drive a car five to 10 years, right? So, Next, chiropractor. Okay, so physical therapy and chiropractor, you know, three grand, you know, not much I could do about that. You know, I had back pain 
Um, unfortunately, that one wasn't covered by my insurance, but uh, you know, uh, money talks. And so if I needed an MRI, well, the next Monday I had an MRI. You know, if you, if you want that, you can get that. And I figured that was worth the money. So at the time I needed that. Um, so restaurants then, you know, work lunches, as I said, and dates as well with the girlfriend, go out, you know, so that's $3,000 um, on a yearly basis. Then we got travel. So again, friends' weddings, maybe destination weddings, we go to Mexico, go snowboarding in the winter time, uh, and also go to Belgium. Groceries, I tend to you know, shop at Ralph's and Trader Joe's, so I don't really go to the more high-end uh, grocery stores because they definitely have a premium to, you know, like Whole Foods is definitely, uh, you know, kind of more pricey. Um, maybe for special occasions, I might go there. They, they do have like great birthday cakes and things like that. Um, next, we have the general merchandise. So, you know, from Amazon or Target, if, as I mentioned before, you know, that kind of adds up. Automotive again, so ma maintenance, DMV, um, insurance cost, car insurance, $970 there. Utilities, so that's mainly, you know, mainly electricity is expensive. So that's like $660 in electricity and gas, $28. Uh, percent of that so $240 in gas computer so same kind of thing $750 uh, per year but that's averaged out so I basically say that's about 3k every four years so that allows me to buy a new workstation every three years now I am a visual effects artist or um, and I, I use my computer for a variety of things including learning uh, new tools and things like that so partially that is entertainment as well playing a video game or watching something uh, on youtube but also partially i have my 3d applications my visual effects software so um internet then 650 so that's you know just getting internet um then uh, entertainment so here Disneyland, visiting concerts, uh, Halloween, uh, maybe a costume or something, or visiting museums as well. So those are kind of you know fun things to do, and you know there's a lot to do in um, LA. But sometimes my entertainment is also just go to the beach, and then it doesn't really cost me anything, right? It's very cheap, so um, and that's totally fun date as well, or you know fun activity to do. Um, telephone, so that's my uh, contract, my. Uh, my mobile phone, my iPhone. Then we have uh, ATMT in cash. So here, same thing, right? Um, I kind of said 260, but really that comes down to about you know $1,000 every four years. And that can go towards buying a new iPhone or buying a new phone in general, buy a new iPad or some other electronics that I want, some small scale stuff, whatever. Gasoline and fuel, $250 a year. So I don't drive a lot. And especially these days, you know, with the lockdown, definitely don't drive a lot. But even then, um, my work isn't that far away. So wasn't driving that much. So gasoline is pretty cheap. Clothing and shoes, I buy in bulk. So I buy in bulk when the sales are on. Uh, I remember when one of the... Uh, the you know, big uh, sports uh, stores basically went bankrupt, I went shopping because everything was, you know, 50% off, 70%, 70% off and, you know, good brands, right? So, you know, definitely buy in bulk when you can. Same with shoes, you know, make use of those uh, discount uh, shoes uh, when you can. Gifts, you know, birthdays or uh, maybe other, other gifts, you know, could be wedding gifts as well. Um, but yeah birthdays of friends often or, or from the girlfriend as well so home improvement small scale stuff right now we're getting into the smaller scale amounts uh, other expenses i don't even know what that is you know we can i, I can show you what, what that is later maybe in but it's it's smaller stuff uh, taxes so tax software to handle taxes uh, so i believe h and r block or whatever turbo tax uh, tax act software i think i use that um, and then services and charges, so banks and investment fees. Uh, sometimes the banks, you know, will say, okay, you know, you were abroad, so there's a foreign transaction fee, um, you know, so that can add up to uh, office supplies. Um, so, you know, small scale stuff. So some pens and paper, whatever. Online services, again, same kind of thing. Um, I don't know, maybe cost of, I don't even remember what this is. And then some charitable giving as well. So altogether, $40,000. So it can be a lot of work to track all of this data. So I don't want to track all of this manually. So instead, what I tend to use is a software called Personal Capital. So Personal Capital is uh, you know, a, a nice little piece of software that you can basically use to track it both on your phone as well as track it um, on your computer. And uh, there's money management uh, sections to it and there's also you know, investment sections to it. 
And so, you know, different uses for it. So let's have a look in terms of the money management over here. It basically allows you to sort of set, uh, you know, savings tools and savings goals, budgeting goals, all of that kind of stuff. But the main thing that it also gives you is this sort of this overview. So over here, you know, I, I downloaded this picture and it gives you a dashboard. So I'll just make this a little bit bigger. And so let's zoom into this dashboard. Now, this is not my dashboard. This is an example that Personal Capital gives, but it's a great tool. Honestly, I love this thing. And I will link down a referral link below in the description as well, so that you know you get twenty dollars off, um, or you get a twenty dollars Amazon gift card, and and I get that as well. So you know that's that said, this is a great tool. I love using this, and I I really uh, gain a lot of insight in this as well. So what does it show you, right? So here on the left hand side, it shows you your net worth, um, it shows your cash accounts, it shows your investment account, and then also your credit cards. So if there's any specific charges on all of your credit cards, you can see. So this is a great overview to see all kinds of things. Then we've got budgeting, right? So wh where's your money going, right? So, you know, mortgage, you know, restaurants, automotive costs, all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, you can kind of say, okay, this is how much it should cost. And then how much have you spent towards all of that? So this will also show you in detail your cash flow. And this is currently on this month, but you can see this. It's not really shown here, but you can actually see this over you know, many, many years. And, um, you know, probably in a future video, I'll try to cover that as well for my own expenses. So you can see maybe my personal cash flow. Um, and then we can see, you know, portfolio balances. So that's more on the investing side, but uh, great stuff, right? I mean, you can kind of, you know, see the current status, but you can also see over time how your portfolio has been performing. This is over the last 90 days. But if you've, as soon as you start adding in your accounts and then, you know, you can get quite a lot of history. Like for me, I can have a five year or more history of how my investments have done and also how my net worth has done. So, you know, this is great. And then they, they have some recommendations potentially. So, you know, one of the services that they offer, they do offer uh, financial advisor services. You don't have to take them. You know, if you don't want to take them, don't have to take them. If you feel like, oh, this could be useful to you, great. But you don't have to, you know, make use of their financial services. And then here you can see, right, they have some recommended strategies. So, you know, here they say a target allocation versus the current allocation, what the difference could be, you know, over a long period of time. I mean, we've talked about compound interest a little bit before in another video, but here here we can see age 42, if age 42, and then here age 92. So it's 50 years later, and potentially they state that their uh, target strategy could be a lot higher. So, you know, interesting things to look into and to learn, right? And then you, know, you can see a little bit of uh, insight into the market, and here you can see your emergency fund as well, if it was fluctuating or not, S as well as retirement savings it kind of will analyze your cash flow and it'll see, okay, how much money have you sort of put towards your retirement savings and how far are you along that goal? So over here, this person is 15,000 of the 22,000 along the goal, All right? So those are some of the things that I wanted to cover. Um, I hope you like this. If you like this, please like and subscribe. Also smash that notification bell for the YouTube algorithm. And I look forward to doing more of these videos. Let me know what your, what your uh, you know, spreadsheet tools are. Maybe you use uh, why you need a budget. Uh, write it down in the comments down below. Uh, ask me some questions about my favorite tools if you wanted to see more. Um, but this is kind of what I use and uh, I highly recommend to make use of personal capital for yourself so that once you know your expenses, then you can also uh, project out more your net worth and also your saving rate. So in another video, I look forward to going over saving rate. All right, that's it for me for today. So I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next video. Bye bye.